Saw a ghost. I'll end this quickly. I'll cut down anyone in my way. Life bottle, take one to bed and rest. Peach gel. That boy who called himself Inominat. Could he really be Velvet's younger brother? It could have been an illusion intended to torment her. Don't you agree, Eleanor? I do. Velvet's objective is avenging her brother after all. We've all seen how strongly she feels about it. I find it hard to believe that the one so dear to her is still alive. I don't know what powers Inominat possesses, but I think that really was her little brother. Velvet was able to see past Melchior's illusions. But look at her now. I just don't want to believe that the real Lofi could do such a thing. Could it be possible that Inominat was reborn into her brother's body? I don't know. But if that was the case, I'm not sure Velvet would be in so much agony. Yes, I guess. You know me not actually being Velvet's brother. It makes a twisted sort of sense. But it's too awful. Life bottle abandoned. Grape gel. Is this? It's okay. I'm tired. Have you been journeying long, then? Ten years. My master entrusted everything to me. But I couldn't do anything. Ten years? My wings are weak. It... it doesn't matter anymore. I see. If you've been working that hard, you surely need a break. I just happened to get my hands on some prickle boar meat. I'll be cooking up a stew for dinner. But would you care to join me? Huh? No, I... All I have on me now is this apple. Here. Once your belly is full of warm food, you'll be able to pick yourself back up. I can feel it. Your body is shouting, I want to live. I'm a disgrace. I don't deserve to live. Is life something you have to earn? To deserve? Well... These feelings are natural. You eat when you're hungry and cry when you're sad. Feeling these things is proof that we're alive. Alive? What's your name? Mine is Selica. Selica Crow. I'm an exorcist. Artori... No, Arthur. I'm Arthur. Warriors! 
What in the world was that? Rokuro! Aizen! You saw it too, then? Sure did. Arturius. And he called himself Arthur. I've heard of this. The Earthen Historia. They say that events on the world's surface cast imprints on the Earth Pulse that runs below. In other words, an illusion of the past. It's not an illusion. That was my sister. So, he managed to fool her too, is it? Yes. Yes, that must be it. That's why she freed me from the prison. Rokuro, have you recovered from your wounds? Yep. Tough as nails, that's old Rokuro. I'm more worried about Velvet. Is she okay? Uh, how could she be okay? Inominat is reborn, and it's her little brother. A blade can't just be hard. It's gotta be flexible, or it'll snap the first time it meets an unexpected force. I misunderstood the true meaning of strength, and so did he. Let's just worry about ourselves for now. This Earth Pulse is completely under Inominat's domain. We can think of it as an extension of his body. Yeah, which means my power won't get us out of here. Be wary. Inominat may be the one showing us these memories. Remember, he's after Velvet. And the two types of malevolence inside her. True. And we may be able to use that against him to get us out of here. What are you saying? Just use her? If it's necessary. We have to keep moving. Nothing will be gained by staying here. And we ought to look for Mogilu. Even she doesn't deserve to be stuck here forever. It's kind of like the opposite situation in, from Zestiria. In Zestiria, the Urban Historia, it was, it's implied they were left behind by Maltellus in order to guide the party onto the right path. But here, it's being used in order to drive Velvet insane. Legless Ring. I remastered that one, didn't I? So, what is this Earthen Historia you mentioned? As I've said, an Earth Pulse is a natural force that circulates within the land. Wind blows. Water flows, birds fly, flowers bloom. All actions in nature leave their mark on the Earth Pulse. These marks become etched within the land itself and remain a part of the Earth Pulse, like memories. So it's a record of the world's past. Does it remember human and Moloch deeds? Everything that occurs is part of nature, including the acts of humans, Molochim, and even demons. So that means that even this very conversation is being recorded in the Earthen Historia? Anything bad I've done in secret, any insults you've ever told behind someone's back, the land sees it all. My insults? It's just an example. Pay it no mind. Does that mean that Inominat is drawing specific memories from the Earthen Historia and showing them to Velvet? I believe so. That's how Rokuro and I saw the same thing even though we weren't there. With the Earth itself as his vessel, it's a trick only Inominat could pull off. Awfully devious for a self-styled Empyrean. But the attack did strike home. Keep a close watch on her until we're out of the Earth Pulse. Right. Velvet's psyche took a heavy blow there. Yes. She's in rough shape. How long do you think she'll last? What do you mean? Just what I said. Remember, hardness alone won't save you from breaking. If she keeps being shaken up like this, she won't be able to handle it. But what can we do? If she breaks, she breaks. Until then, we go on with our mission. What? Can't we help her? If you let sympathy fog your vision, you can end up crashed on a reef. Even so, we can't just let her suffer. It's too much. I'm fairly sure that Velvet would say the same thing if she was in Aizen's place. And do you agree, Rokuro? Me? I still have a debt to Velvet. I will pay it. But in the end, her fate will be something she'll have to decide for herself. 
That's true, but... Then I have a decision of my own to make. I won't give up on Velvet, no matter what. I see. Do what you have to. We won't stop you. Aha! Peach gel. Very ha now that caps me out. Got life bottle. Welcome home, Arthur. Hi, Selica. I fixed the fence around the house. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. With the brigands stepping up their attacks, the town elders have been worried. But this should put their minds at ease. No. If the brigands turn into demons, a mere fence won't stop them. Hmm? Nothing. Don't worry about it. I'm pretty confident in my carpentry. And the other two? Probably at the Cape again. I've warned them a hundred times that it's dangerous. Luffy said probably badgered Velvet into going. Don't worry, she'll watch out for him. Yeah, I can only hope that this little one grows up to be as strong as she is one day. Huh? You're happy, I hope. Of course I am. I, I never thought I could ever be this happy. Famous last words. I, I I only wish I'd known earlier. I would have made something even nicer for you. Oh, you made this for me? Yeah. I put all my heart into it. I'll cherish it always. It'll remind me of this happy day. Let this serve as proof of our love. This I swear. I swear to protect you both with my life. That's Lord Artorius's past. <laughs> It's all a pack of lies. His smile. His promise. Everything. What we just saw. Was that from before the opening? Yeah. Celica was there, and Artorius still had use of his arm. It didn't look like he was an exorcist either. I never would have thought Lord Artorius could smile so tenderly. But he's since become an exorcist, taking on the mantle of Shepard and the weight of the world. All because he lost his beloved wife. I'd understand if you wanted to back out. But at this rate, I think the time is coming. Not much longer now. It's coming. To think I ate up his lies without questioning a word. What a joke.
Peach shell. Velvet didn't know those things about Artorius and Celica, did she? Probably not. That was when the two were alone and first getting to know each other. We were seeing glimpses of a warm, loving family. But really, it just gave me the creeps. Same here. I could keenly feel Inominat scheming behind everything we saw. He's trying to get at Velvet. I think she used to truly love Lord Artorius. Having that happy past thrust in front of her at a time like this must be tearing her apart. Probably, but a demon like me wouldn't understand. What Velvet is going through is horrible. Even as a human, I can scarcely imagine what it must be like. But I approach it just a little bit, because like her, I was his pupil. Artorias said he needed two types of malevolence to awaken an Ominat. The illusions at a ball, making sure we knew about the attack on Titania, and Inominat appearing as her brother. If all of that was planned to extract the malevolence from her, we'd all better brace for worse to come. Right then, let's finish this! Many of them. Celica, I'm coming! It's too late! Take Velvet and Lafayette and run! I can't do that! I want to have my life with you, with our child! Protect my own family! Remember this moment well, Artorius. Humans are weak, filled with sin. Melchior! The people of this village offered you and your beloved family up to the demon brigands. A sacrifice, so that they could escape and hide. No, they wouldn't. It happens often. The reason people act on is burdened by the weight of their sins. However... I have found a method to adjust their reason. A domain? What is this incredible power? Don't tell me the Empyrean we've been searching for was here this whole time. These... Molochim... 
so they have been reborn. But be not deceived. They are not the same people you knew. Hold up. There's something wrong here. Why, uh, why is th th this sloppy set uh, at the same age as the present? Why? Why must fate be so cruel? It appears that Inominat's resurrection is incomplete. We must guide him until we understand why. I'll be taking these Malakim. Wait! Sorry, I couldn't keep my promise. I'll make things right. I'll abandon who I am. Nameless Moloch. I will forge a pact with you. I will put an end. To all the pain in this world. Do you have it in you? You, who abandoned my friend's ideals and fled. On the souls of my dead master, wife, and child. This, I swear. My name is Artorius Colbrand. I have inherited the will and the strength of Claude in Asgard. Former head of the Exorcists. Very well. Let tonight's tragedy change fate and birth salvation. That Moloch, it was me. You don't remember? Not at all. They said you were reborn as a Moloch. That means... What exactly? The soul of a human who passed away can, given the right trigger, be reborn as a Moloch. You're saying that Artorius's child was reborn as Lafayette? If what we saw was real, yes. <laughs> uh, so the female Moloch that was born along with him was... My sister's reincarnation, but I ate her long ago. You... you didn't know, right? I knew. I had already caught on to who Ceres really was. Velvet... But it doesn't matter. What does it change? I'll devour anything to fulfill my goal. My sister, my brother, even the world. That's who I am. That's all I am. So how did Luffy set not age a day? And why did he start at, 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 at the age of a child? That makes no sense. He should have started as a little Moloch fetus or baby. Maybe some kind of special Moloch reincarnation rule. That's the only explanation. That was the day all of this started, wasn't it? Yeah, the opening. Inominat was halfway revived and demons became visible to all. His power also robbed almost every Moloch of their free will that day. I never imagined that Lord Artorius's quest to change the world was so steeped in tragedy. The villagers should have never sold them out to those bandits. It was cruel, yes, but nothing remarkable. People are capable of anything when under pressure. Even more so when they can do it under the mantle of the greater good. Velvet's family was probably the furthest outside the village circle that night. That's pure selfishness! Humans are selfish creatures. You should be aware of that by now. That's why you said what you said just now, even if you didn't know it. Artorius's quest to change the world, not Artorius's quest to save humanity. <sighs> uh, I... 
I mean no disrespect. It's just an observation. A man with the power to change the world turned his back on the potential of humanity. That may be the biggest tragedy of that night. <sighs> the savior of the world lost all hope in its people. Can I see a bottle? Hmm. Aizen, you said a human soul could be reborn as a Moloch given the right trigger, right? Is that something that happens frequently? I'm afraid I don't have an answer for that. We know that humans are sometimes reborn as Malachim, but not how or why. It's more likely among people with greater resonance, but the process is still a mystery. Huh. So it's not something that happens, or that can be made to happen easily, ordinarily at least. But Velvet's sister was reborn as Ceres, and her unborn child came back as Lafayette. What are the chances of that? It might not have been chance. They both died on the Scarlet Night. Their rebirths may have been influenced by the sacrificial ceremony. Are you saying that Inominat made it happen on purpose? Call it an educated guess. But I don't think even an Empyrean can control the lives of humans or Malachim at his whim. If it wasn't chance, it might have been destiny. Velvet said she ate Ceres. Her own sister reborn as a Moloch. How could such a horrible thing be destiny? Sorry. I didn't mean to make light of a tragedy, but our fates intertwine, the good and the bad, whether we like it or not. That's what makes it destiny, right? True. But this... Get a hold of yourself, Eleanor. Velvet and Lafayette are in rougher waters than any of us. They'll be looking to you to light their way. Yes. I must remain calm and steady. I'm not sure it's really destiny. It seems like Melchior was guiding a lot of these events. After all, he even expect he had been prepared Bien Fu in preparation of Velvet escaping, so that means he must have known that Ceres would betray the Abbey. And he even seemed seem to have planned for Ceres to be created as well through uh, uh, Celica. Look! Over there! An Earth Pulse Rift! We may be able to get out from there. Arthur, there's something I'd like to speak to you about, alone. <laughs> Two souls possessing powerful resonance and free of malevolence. These must be sacrificed on the Scarlet Night. Ah, yes. The ceremony to resurrect Denominata. You read my book. I haven't fully mastered the ancient tongue yet, but I have read your notes. You wrote that if Inominat is resurrected, we can make a world free of demons. Seven years ago, a soul with strong resonance, my own unborn son, was sacrificed for that purpose. Now, Inominat's resurrection is half complete. Because of that, everyone's resonance has grown stronger, enabling them to see demons. Yes, that's the truth behind the opening. So, if one more person is sacrificed... Inominat's resurrection will be complete, and his power will spur the creation of many new exorcists. And there is another Scarlet Knight very soon. Arthur, I must ask. Lafayette? Can't I be the sacrifice? <laughs> Tell me, why do you think that birds fly? I think that birds fly because they must. Why else would they have wings if not to embrace the sky? I have wings too. 
weak as they are. That's why I must fly, now! If we miss this Scarlet Knight, the next won't be for another three years. By then, I won't be alive. Luffy said, why would you say such a thing? The Twelve Year Sickness. That's the name of my disease. So you know. I'm not afraid of being sick. But I don't want to just be a burden on everyone until I die. I couldn't take it. Your wings are your will. And they are strong. Lars. Please. You can't tell Velvet about this. I promise. I'll make a new world. A world where my sister can be happy. Don't talk to me about will! About wings! Both of you! Together! You... You betrayed me! Whoa, hey! What's everyone apologizing for? We're a family, right? Hurry back! I'll make you a quiche! Just the way she taught me! No kidding. I think you'll be an exorcist rival even him. Shut up! He fell further than this back at the shrine. I will have my revenge. <laughs> revenge for Lafayette! Lafayette knew so much more pain than I ever will. And still, I... I couldn't do anything for him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Shut up! It's a lie! A dirty lie! All of it! It's all their lies! And I believe it! Die! You disgusting monster! Chimera. It's got a lot of resistance to this, doesn't it? What is this thing? An amalgamation of horrible demons? It doesn't matter what it is! I'll devour it until it's dead! No mercy! You thought I'd stop there? Annihilating? You broke me! Here's your justice! Fighting order! Check up! Resound! Arrive! Become the blade of destruction! Lost Vaughn? Go! Killing Flash! Behold the arch of my ancestors! I lost my chain? Seriously? Fuck. Ready to die? Whatever comes next. It must have fell down. To kill you! Howling Dragon! Well, that fucking sucks. Oh well, at least I'll have a. Uh, 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 whatever, I'll just I'll just keep getting more. Oh my goodness. Okay, that did not seem like a very challenging foe. Even if I botched that Mystic Art at the end. Illusions. 
farce? How callous. That farce is the true face of my sister. <sighs> she hates, resents, devours, and kills. She tramples people, cities, everything, living only by her emotions. What an ugly, tainted soul. It's not like that! Nothing you say will matter. She knows. She knows if it's the truth. He's right. Just think. Everything I did was baseless. Arrogant. And even so, I still... You hurt so many innocent people, didn't you? More than I can count. I devoured and killed so many. Without even knowing Arthur's true aims. I destroyed people. I destroyed whole towns. And worse yet, you didn't even show mercy to your own sister's reincarnation. I... And despite all of that, I still love you, Velvet. That's why I chose to become a sacrifice for you, sister. But think, if you try to stop the resurrection, wouldn't my death be all for nothing? To tell you the truth, I was terrified of dying. It was so dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> So sorry. You'll accept it then? That everything you've done up until this point, all of it. Yes. It was all for nothing and for no one. I hurt so many people, all for no reason. I'm a monster. If you've accepted it, you have to atone for your sins. Once I eat the final two malevolences inside you, I'll fully awaken. Give them to me. Give me your hatred, your despair. If you do, I can cleanse this world of all its pain. I had hoped that you could live in a world without pain and sadness. But you're a monster now. You don't belong there. <sighs> Velvet! Let me go. I have to go. If you don't, you will die too for no reason. No! A twisted monster like me doesn't deserve to live. Don't you understand? You're the reincarnation of the first sacrifice. Part of me. Don't worry, I'll devour you too. Be set. Tell this self-absorbed idiot what she needs to hear! Please... Let me go... Will you stop whining?! <gasps> no, I don't understand! You snap at people! You're scary! You... You tried to eat me! But... You're also kind! And you're filled with life! I don't understand a single thing about you! <sighs> but you gave me a name when I was a number! You gave me that compass! You taught me what it meant to be alive! That's why I care about you, Velvet! I'll protect you for my own sake! Fee... I don't care if you're malevolent or if it was pointless! If the world says it's a mistake to love you, I'll fight the whole world! I don't care how much pain you feel! It doesn't matter! A world without you, Velvet! Is the one thing I couldn't bear! Let me go! 
burns in my heart too a flame i cannot quench no matter how hard i try just like you velvet i finally understand how you felt but the only one i can fight for is myself that's good enough that's proof that you are truly alive And now the Calyx is where the real challenge starts. How many times do you plan to destroy and rebuild your own heart, Magilu? We're on a hundred and seven. Who was it a hundred and eight? I lost count. Not that I really care. Pathetic fool. Did I not tell you it would require an iron will as indomitable as the very trees that live and die across millennia? Like you, I suppose. Or that boy over there? That is the foundation of an ideal world. One free from man's sins. <laughs> An ideal world, huh? You, kid. The boy who was your companion, Laffy said. He's alive. Chasing a terrifying demon girl, he has learned the immensity of the seas and weathered the dry wastes of the land. People, they're different from us. Despite the pain, the anguish, they embrace the life they've been given. They live undaunted by the ugliness of the world. <gasps> so you're doing this all for them? Is that what this is? <laughs> Not even close. They aggravate me to my wit's end. <laughs> like stabs in the chest, over and over and over. And that's exactly why. That's why I intend to see how all of this ends. I won't be satisfied until I do. Words bereft of meaning. You truly are my greatest failure. Gosh, funny just how little I care. No! Please! Let me guess. We came at a good time? You're late. Because of you, I had to have a really boring conversation. So, you came face to face with Inominat. If so, then you must know that your quest for revenge is utterly meaningless. Yeah, I did. I know why sadness fills the world, and I know how deep are the burdens of sin. I tried to abandon my memories of Arthur and Laffy, to cut myself off from it all, and end this tragedy. It's... it's what they would have wanted. Exactly. 
You do well to know your place. But that's exactly why I can't forgive them. Not Artorius, not Inominat. I know my heart is ugly and full of contradictions, but those days we spent together in familial warmth, they're proof that I, that all of us, were truly alive. That's why, no matter how hard, no matter how sad it gets, I will take my vengeance to the very end! Velvet! Don't be a fool! Just give up and die like you ought! It is your destiny to wallow in despair! You take my family, turn me into a monster, and you want my soul too? Now who's being the fool? Remember this well. The Lord of Calamity never gives up, not even in the face of death. Have you no shame for your sins, you unholy monster? <laughs> Let me in on this. I lost a bet, and I've got some anger to work out. You sure you can fight in your condition? Who do you think I am? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. I am the dastardly witch Moggy Lou, scourge of self-righteous exorcists! Now face the wrath of Moggy Lou Maven! Fools, all of you! Okay, kill this kid first. Everyone, I'm sorry to have worried you. I wasn't worried. I didn't realize you were someone who needed looking after. Me neither. This is our way of someone who trust you. Yeah, you horrible imprint! See, stabbed in the chest, that's all you with me! Why is my shit missing? Okay, now just you. Wait, that counts as the chain! I cannot die yet! Not here! Not now! Okay. Uh, I'll take it. Tell Artorius and Inominat. They took something precious from me. I'll never forgive them for that! The annals of history are stained with evil people like you! You spread havoc and destruction, all to satisfy your own ends! A dark font of malevolence! You're a demon lord 
the irredeemable embodiment of sin! The Lord of Calamity. It is the Exorcist's duty to destroy you! You talk a lot. How about you keep talking and tell us where Ifrit is? You'll regret this. I can feel Inominot! He's coming! We can fight here no longer! The Enfu! Close the rift! I can't! Come forth! Carelessness will get you killed. Zavid! <sighs> you ruined the moment. Huh? Don't you mean, thanks for saving us, Zavid? You're my hero and role model? Thank you for saving us, Zavid. Where exactly are we now? We're in an abbey facility on Hexen Isle. I heard Melchior was in charge here, so I snuck in. I hadn't expected an extra-dimensional space. Is there a way out? There is now, but I busted my way in. Let's head outside. We can talk then. Uh... Who's that? A friend. His name is Number One. Hey, wanna come with us? If you stay here alone, a dragon might get you. I bet you wouldn't like that. Yeah, that sounds scary. Great! Come on, kid! What are you doing? We can't leave him like this. I'll get him a vessel, somehow. <sighs> Do what you like. Okay, that worked out somehow. Even though he had... Uh, yeah, and my character's not recovered enough BG for me to start a long chain, unfortunately. I, I shouldn't even, probably shouldn't have even barred wasting it on that Chimera. The Chimera is not, doesn't seem to be quite as strong as Melchior, after all. Hmm. Eleanor, are you feeling okay? Why do you ask? You always seem to enjoy eating, but today you look like you were struggling a little bit. Really? Well, I'm not sick or anything. I actually feel even better than normal. If you say so. Wait, do you just not like quiches? No, I like them just fine. Velvet makes some great ones, doesn't she? It's amazing when you consider she can't taste them. I've got it. You hate spinach, don't you? I suppose there's no point in denying it. And here I thought you people would eat anything. I know a lot of people don't like carrots or bell peppers, but spinach? That's a new one to me. You think so? It's quite bitter and it's got that smell. Kind of grassy or something medicinal, or... I didn't know you were so picky. Actually, now that I think about it, you had some trouble with the solitoma, too. It's actually because of the solitoma. I used to love spinach when I was little, but now it just reminds me of... Ugh, Solitoma. I've had to take Solitoma before too, but it had the opposite effect on me. Now spinach tastes sweet by comparison. So much for the serious, mature woman. Looks like even you have some child left in you. But don't let it get to you. Being a fussy eater is just another way of life. You're in charge of your own plate. Ugh, I just don't like spinach. What's the big deal? Besides, I know you all hate it too. I'm talking about the spinach method. Supporting peers in achieving cohesive harmony. It's the foundation of any successful team, and you all completely fail at it. Okay, so first, what the hell are you dribbling about? And second, I'm not going to be lectured by some wee baby who won't eat her spinach. And you know what? I do what I want. I'm a free woman, and I don't need to live by your rules. Some of us just aren't cut out for team leadership. We'll leave that to you. You just let us each do our own thing. Am I right, Eisen? Don't be ridiculous. The spinach method is the first thing every pirate learns if they want to join Eifried's crew. Sometimes the younger sailors forget all the steps. I was just running a refresher lecture on it last night. Eleanor's on the money here. 
By the way, Aizen, I'm still waiting on your latest report. I haven't heard anything from you in a while now. Oh, I, I, uh, oh, I was gonna get to that, um, tomorrow. I've had it up to here! All right, you three, sit down and listen. Did you not hear me? Sit down and listen! I don't need to live by your rules. Some of us just aren't cut out for it. I'll do it tomorrow. You might as well be toddlers. Our enemy is formidable and well-organized. Some might even say we'd be crazy to take them on. Surely even you three can recognize that any small lapses in cohesion could bring total disaster upon us. How did we get from spinach to a lecture on team building? Is it because I this skit happened because I ate too much quiche? Is that what is that why? Yeah, I did set auto cook for quiche <laughs> just to reduce stun chances here and make my heels a little stronger. Good luck. She said good luck. Was that always the case? Huh. Show them how I. Okay, this is a safe zone, but I'm sure there are baddies waiting for me down below. Calyx 1. At least we're not starting from the final Calyx. Thanks for tuning in to this Let's Play of Tales of Berseria. If you enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe, and or hit the bell icon.